Yeah, this is all about how to get easily get good information about the air quality we're experiencing at the time. And you've all heard about AQHI or Air Quality Health Index. And um, that's great, but it's an index. So it lumps things together. And um, it also is mostly designed for healthy people. And what I'm going to show you is how to get um, under underlying information that Alberta Environment makes available so that you, you can look at the exact levels in, in uh, all the various places where it's measured in the province. So the first thing you want to do is look for Air Quality Alberta or AQHI Alberta, and you'll see one that shows down there a little further AQHI map. And you look for that one, the one that says map, or it might say air quality map. And what you get is this. Now, the first thing it shows is the AQHI, the index, at all of the stations across Alberta. And just as an aside, you'll on the map of Alberta, you'll notice there are blocks of color. Those are uh, things called air sheds or air quality management. Uh, zones where Alberta environment, industry, municipalities, and interest groups jointly work to manage it. Those are important for tonight only because um, at one stage, when you're looking to find a station, they're clustered not by alphabetical order, but by alphabetical order within each of the airsheds. That's all. So here you've got some forecasting of the AQHI on the left. You can look at particular stations on the right, but if you want to go into better information, you go near the top on the left to query and download. That one right there. Now, the things that you want to most naturally jump into is look at by station or by community, but that's actually not the best way to go into it. If you click on by parameters, there, right in the middle. There you'll see Find Particulate Matter PM 2.5. That's the default one because it's the one that's really a problem. Unless you're near an industrial site with something like hydrogen sulfide, the particulate matter is the stuff that's really difficult, as we've heard here in these sessions before, because it gets in really deep into the lungs. But if you click on the fine particular matter, you can see that if you want to, you can select about 20 or 25 other emissions. If you have a sensitivity, <clears throat> excuse me, like I had to ozone uh, when I had pre pre transplant, when I had uh, mild asthma, I could look at that. I would go in and look at that. But it's best to start off with just to look at fine particular matter and leave it at that. Then you go up and select a station. At the station, you can then pick from the groups all clustered by, by the, uh, the air sheds. And there in the capital air shed, you can pick some of the Edmonton region ones down near the bottom, a little bit lower there. So you can see sort of in the middle, Ursula, Edmonton East, yep. Edmonton Macaulay, St. Albert. So click on one of those, or if you were interested in one of the others, you can click on that. Oh, so you're picking St. Albert. Okay. Yep. And now you just slide up on that a little bit yep. above to get to the dates. There. there. We go. Now the default is it always picks the most recent hour. So you've got April 18th. 1900. That's the end date. We can't go forward, so it doesn't forecast, but we can go okay. back. You can go back with either of those up to a year. So oh, wow. pick, pick say, a week before. Yep. Bingo. Okay. There you've got it. And then the next step, the last one, is to hit graph data. If you hit tabular data, you'll get, that's exactly what you'll get. Okay, the and it's <laughs> great. It's great for someone who's doing research or analysis. So just close that and hit graph data. 
And there you see the real time measurements in St. Albert. And the scale on the left, that one goes up to 25 micrograms per cubic meter. I've seen it go up as high as 600 uh, in, in the times when there's smoke. To give you reference, the world, uh, the European Union thinks that their recommended standard is a 24 hour average of less than 20. This is a really, really good air quality graph right here. The uh, uh, World Health Organization thinks it should be about below 10. But as I say, I've seen it up to 600. And so you can see exactly what the amount is, but you can also see the trends. So if you go back to April 14th and look at it, it was going up like a shot and is getting up to something that you might not want to go out and do your walk on. But if you see in the towards the afternoon, it is dropping like a stone. You might know that, you know, if you wait an hour or two, it would be good air quality for going outside and cutting the lawn or or going for a walk. And and it gives you uh, a, an idea of that. The other thing you can do is if you know which direction the wind is coming from or which direction a fire is coming from, you can also go on this and look at more than one station at once so that you can get an advance warning of what's coming. This is um, really handy. I was kind of a guinea pig for the guys when we were developing this because I had mild asthma. And I found that I would start to tighten up and wheeze two to four hours before there was enough fire smoke in the air to be tasted or smelt, which was even before you could see it, which was well before you got a warning. So there was a period of hours there when, when the fine particulate matter was really quite high, but it hadn't triggered anything and you just normally couldn't detect it. So this is a good way when we're in fire season um, to, or when there's inversions in the winter, uh, to get an idea of what's really going on, just to be safe. And that's the whole thing. That's all it takes. It looks like a lot of information and a lot of buttons, but once you've been through it once or twice, it's, um, it's dead easy. And you can use it to protect yourself because, you know, the standards that are set are set for healthy people. And we're in a different category. No, that's true, Raymond. And the other thing, too, is like if you know you're going camping, you know, by Rocky Mountain House, you can look to see if there's, you know, you can kind of pre-plan based on past data. Is it, you know, has it been high like this, you know, in that April 14th zone all week? Is it maybe that's not the weekend that you want to go out, right? Yeah. Or th those sorts of things. Are you like you say here, like 14? So within three days, we're almost at zero. Right. Oh, it makes a, those those numbers yeah. on that chart, the majority of them are below 10. Yep. I've I've hardly ever seen it in all the years that I've used this. I've hardly ever seen it that clean. Oh wow. Raymond. You know, yeah. Sorry. You were saying that it yeah, it doesn't predict this is what that has happened in your chart. It, all of this is from now to all of the previous hours that have been been measured. So it's it's a it's a an actual data as opposed to forecasting and predicting. There's so a little get, bit. Pardon me. And when you get the actual data, how long is it? The time span. Oh, it's within minutes. Okay. So if you if you see the one that they put up as the automatic end date is seven o'clock this evening. So these are real time monitors, and with that in mind. Sometimes when it's going up like a rocket, you'll suddenly see there are no readings. And that's always, there, there may be exceptions, but I don't know of any. That means that there's so much fine particulate matter that it's clogged up the, uh, the uh, monitor. Oh, wow. So you, it, it, and it can't get cleared until you have someone physically go out and clear it. So there's just and so much particulate in the air. So that it's much. Don't go, don't go, don't go anywhere. So that it's not even registering a number. No, no. And the other thing to do with this is fine particulate matter gets everywhere. So close your windows, even if you're not going out. If you see it going up high like that, even if you, if it's high, even if you can't smell it, taste it, or see it, 
close your windows. Let your furnace filter do the work of, of, of uh, clearing it for you. Fair enough. And oh, Tom, Tom, the one thing you were wondering about about forecasting, if you go to um, back a screen, uh, Ursula. Screen? Yeah. Which one? No, go go back up to the purple at the top and go back. Okay. Yep. And hit it again. Okay. AQHI map. Yep. You'll see on the left there is a little bit of forecasting. Oh, right here. Okay, so it looks it looks just very generally tonight and tomorrow as as best guesses. So okay. that's a little bit of help. So with this forecasting, what what what's the range? Is it like a zero to ten? Oh, is it yeah. like, is this your micro is this your micrograms per meter cube? Our, Did it... Well, because it's an index, okay. it's it's not just PM 2.5. It's yeah. several things lumped together, which is one of the shortcomings of an index. Because mm -hmm. you know, like in school, you could have great marks on every subject and just tank one. And, and that's the if, one that drives it if down. that yeah. one that's tanked happens to be one that's bad for our lungs, then it matters. That's that's why that's the main motivation I have for showing you this so that you can look at particular things and, and take care of yourself. The scale of AQHI goes from one to 10. I got in an argument with them because they said it's the health index. So I thought 10 should be good air and one yeah. should be poor. <laughs> uh, but this was um, federal provincial negotiations. Okay. So that, you know, the guy in the next next uh, office to me was heading off to Ottawa to federal provincial negotiations to get uh, 14 governments to agree. <laughs> and they wanted it Look. 10 is bad. So okay. 10 is bad. Yeah. And I, I mean, you look at like the pain scale, right? If you go in, they always go, okay, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the worst. So I can see why they kind of maybe went that way because people are used to using yes. it. But I agree with you. 10 should be like, yeah, I can get out there and do something. Right. Yeah, ex mm -hmm. exactly. And then they color code it with the, with the numbers with going from blue up to, to, to orange to red okay. to, to give an indication. But I this is, th this just kind of chunks it. The other one that I showed you, can 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 really help. So we have uh, another uh, one we can show yeah. you. Um, yeah. Raymond, yeah. what uh, is included in fine particular matter? Like anything and everything. Everything that 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 is smaller than two point five microns. Any any kind of particle that's floating any in any kind of particle so okay. it could be something seemingly innocuous or right. it could be something like a, a sulfate or or uh something acidic which is gravel, which is worse gravel, but gravel but, but how do you ever uh filter that out um pm 2.5 is many 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 times smaller than a human hair yeah human hair is the width of it is Okay. Someone help me. Is it like fifty microns? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So this is how, and th that's what's dangerous with the, the particulate your, matter, yeah. even if it, even if it's a, some innocuous substance, just dust, just you know, nothing. It's so small, it goes in so deep. That's why it's bad for even healthy people, let alone um, people with compromised compromised lungs. And that's why I asked, pass this along to Ursula and asked to, to talk about it. It's important, yeah. especially as disease progression happens as well. It, it it won't take nearly as much irritant to to aggravate you, right? Yeah. And 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 everyone here, every little bit of of protecting our lungs, just babying them a little bit, picking the time. You know, so Anne knows whether she can wait a couple hours and get out for a walk or if she has to get it in gear and go now yeah. or or it's going to be a go around the apartment and uh, push Tom out of the way, Dave. Yeah, she does. But, uh, yeah. Raymond, the question, yeah. I know it's air quality, but when I worked for the railroad, when tank cars have, have had an accident or spill yeah. on the railway, that goes into the air. Yep. How long? How long would that take to register immediately, or 
Well, it it depends on how close it is to one of these stations that you see on the on the map, uh, and it would depend on the wind. It would depend on how much is released. But yeah, that's that's a, a really really important yeah. one. Um, we uh, environment has has groups who go out. And the energy regulator in a lot of those cases would go out and do monitoring close to the site and issue bulletins for people close by. But if you hear of if you hear of something that's 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 derailed and you can go in and use this, pick a site that's relatively close to it, and you could go through instead of picking fine particulate matter, say if it's uh some chemicals and that, you can start to go through the different ones that are are shown there and uh, pick out some of the some of the chemicals and see what's happening. Oh, just a warning, um, just because of expense, not every one of these stations has every one of that list of 25 uh, substances tested for. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. It's, yeah, and a part of the reason why we can do this is anytime that we would write an approval for a new industrial site or or plant, we would write it into their their approval that they're legally required to participate in in they were to do monitoring themselves and to participate in the air shed to pick up part of the costs of the air shed and to cooperate with everybody else. Uh, they <laughs> often used to say, you know, well, look, we just admit this much. That doesn't matter. It's all those other guys who said, right, we would write it in. You're working with them. And they say, we can't do cumulative effects. We're just responsible for this. And we told them, not anymore. And mm -hmm. their trade-off was they got to participate in the management of it. So they got some control. But but we actually had some spine and, and pushed them on those sorts of things. And one of the benefits is this. And the push was to only go to AQHI. <clears throat> Um, I wasn't one of the technical people with hands-on on this. I just tried to help them with the arguments to continue to make this site available with the details beyond AQHI for everybody. So that's a small contribution, but but I think it was important. Right, so, Colin's you, husband has a question. Sorry, I don't know your name. <laughs> You mentioned to look at the stations, but you got to understand that you have to know the wind speeds and directions and everything else and know which station to select. You can't just yeah. select a station beside the rack. You can't. So the news can help oh. with that. And they do have it here, wind direction and wind speed. And like you said, you just have to see yeah. if that particular yeah. station close to you will monitor for go it. To right. the go to the Weather Network or Environment Canada for the weather and look at the wind speeds. Um, uh Check check those things out, but I'll show you something else in fire season that makes that a whole lot easier. So let's can we open up another? Uh... Yep, for sure. Yep. Yep, I'm ready. All right, up up there at the top. Leave this one there available in case okay. anyone has questions. But open up a new one and search. Wait a second, for... I'm going to make it a new window too. Here we go. Okay. okay. Can you guys see it or no? We've got the old one. We got the old one. Okay. Then I'm going to leave it there. Ta-da! Okay, here we go. And, and this is a this next one I'm going to show you is a joint um, joint effort between the same group in in Alberta Environment and the University of British Columbia. It's housed in British Columbia, but this goes to both of uh, the last fellow's questions and Tom's. Tom about sorry. forecasting and and uh, I'm sorry, Colin. Your your you partner's um, question about about Martin. wind direction. Yeah, Martin? yeah. I, I work with the Alberta Environment. I'm with the AER. I'm fairly aware of of all of these uh, measurements. It's just that you got to be a little careful and understand a little bit about wind direction, wind speed. Yeah. And well, which I need to look at and what else not. Yeah. It's, uh, well, yeah. this site will help you with that. And it will also deal with Tom's question about some forecasting. So okay. all you have to search for is Thanks. Fire Smoke Canada. And go to the one that says map. Oh. Well, Fire Smoke should do it. Just fire smoke up should there do. at the top. The home. home. Okay. Yeah. 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 Smoke. And then click on the map. Ta-da! 
view the for current forecast, that one? There. So what the what the uh, the system set up between environment and uh, University of British Columbia is to connect with all the fire reporting from every jurisdiction in in uh, in Canada, the U.S., and northern Mexico. Every current reported fire is shown on that map, and if you zoom in, you can get them in greater and greater detail. And you also see the smoke plumes right that here, come like off them. Here. And if you yeah. look at the little scale down uh, towards the lower left, you see it starts a couple hours before now, and it goes forecasting several hours into the future. So you can start to see which what fires are important, which direction they're coming from. This also, believe it or not, is very, very quiet, especially up where we are, because we still are, are barely coming out of, uh, out of winter. Uh, the amazing thing is those plumes can go pretty much the whole length or width of North America at times. And this gives you an idea of what stations are upwind and what stations might be worth taking a look at to get an idea of what's happening a few hours ahead of Edmonton or where wherever you live or wherever you're going. And you can zoom in quite close. Uh, yep. And the two means there are two fires within that area. And if you if you pull it down into some of those busy places in the States, Where do they see? Where's Kansas? A little bit to the east, yeah. Yeah, they had a lot going on down there. They have a lot going on mm -hmm. in Kansas. Oh so God. something's There's happening, Arkansas, and you and you get it. You get an idea on the same scale of PM two point five in the lower left of micrograms per meter cube. It's the same scale as the other oh. one, and you can see the the color of the density of the smoke. And I, I this is one reason I wanted to share it is two summers ago. Remember, we had about ten days, two weeks of a, an awful lot of smoke. And the news stations and even the weather network kept saying, well, this is coming from central BC. But I also heard news reports that that smoke was going to Vancouver. And I thought, wait a minute, the wind doesn't go in two directions at once. Something's wrong. So I pulled out this map and all of ours was coming from the Meadow Lake area of Saskatchewan. None of it was coming from BC. And yet... Um, the news and even the weather network reported it incorrectly for 10 days. So you can use this map anytime there's fires around to see what's up. If there's something you might need to pay attention to, if you might need to go to the other site and look at some of the values, uh, if you might want to look ahead and look at both uh, an Edmonton station and say um, Hinton or Grand Prairie or Cold Lake to see what's coming. Yeah, does anybody have any questions about that Fire Smoke website? It's a handy reference if you want to go camping. Yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or if you're gonna or if you're gonna travel to visit somebody or mm -hmm. um or if you want to see if there's anything you ought to look up on the other side or or what's coming from where. And this one, you don't have to do any manipulation. In, in fact, if you um, if you search Fire Smoke Canada map, you'll go straight to the map. You, you don't have to do it's, one other intermediate step to click on the map. It, but in either right. case, it's really easy, really easy to use. And it's kind of fun too. And then the other one gives you the yeah, gives you the details. Cool. And I've and on the other one, you can put up two locations at once, so you can see if there's a front coming of a, on a this a one here. Lodge or some, yeah, you can. Oh, so select oh, stations. Yeah, I guess you can really, you could do yep. like St. Albert and Edmonton East because they're kind of right. Like, oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, choose them. Choose a couple that are a little further apart. Okay, so let's do Edmonton East. What about Elk Island? Sure. Still kind of eastish, but. And you'll have to change the time because okay. it will probably be set. Yes, it's still set right at, at now. 
So okay, change that one, up. go back a bit, there. go back a couple of weeks or three weeks, okay. see if anything interesting happened. Okay. And you're okay, and then graph. Yeah. Almost in lockstep. Wow. But look at April 1st, you were getting mm -hmm. up to over 100. In in the east of Edmonton, yeah. Yep. And I picked that because we have the refineries out that way, right? So yep. chances of uh, having it, more it could be, are yeah. Hot, right? They, it tends to, oh, wait a minute. You know, it was, no, that wasn't the day of the, the fire near here. Yeah. Yep. So there we are, a couple of tools. Excellent. Excellent. And we're not talking about ourselves, right, Raymond? <laughs> oh, I don't know about me. <laughs> no, you've been fantastic at showing us how to use this and, and to do it. And uh, Raymond and I did do a video last week that we will throw up into the Better Breathers uh, group and the Pulmonary Fibrosis Support Group on uh, Facebook. So if anybody wants to watch it and go through it, maybe if you're not as computer savvy, you can pause and play and pause and play till yeah, you get it figured out. It's always it's always handy to have, right? You're going to send those two websites out? Yep, I will in an email, you betcha. Awesome. And if I, you have uh, any, if you have any more questions, we can we can always cover it, but I think you'll find it really easy. It is. I've been playing with it. I was saying to Raymond earlier, I have been playing with it a little bit at work just to see and you know, wait, I, I left it for a bit just to come back to and I, it was it was so easy to do. So easy to do. So yeah, I would definitely recommend playing with it a little bit and seeing how you go with it for sure.